one. Next on our agenda is the Service Project Gala, which is the province of past zone chair, Helen Sutphin. Helen, you have the mic. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Um, the pandemic also affected some real challenges to clubs to provide service. And so this morning we are going to hear from every zone how one club in, in each of the zones overcame the challenges and provided some outstanding service. Um, just a reminder, um, I'll try to give you a, a four-minute warning, but I'm not quite sure how to do all of that, so here you go. So let's start it out. From the Longview Kelso Early Birds, we have Natalie Corbett. Natalie, tell us how your club provided service during this time. Hi, everyone. So I'm Natalie. I'm from the Kelso, <clears throat> I mean, the Longview Kelso Early Bird Lions Club, uh, and I'm the director of the Kelso Public Library. Um, so back in January, the library was still closed, uh, and we weren't sure when we were going to be able to open to the public again. <laughs> And so uh, to help with curbside checkouts and things like that. Um, but that left quite a lot of work to be done behind the scenes that hadn't been attended to in a really long time. And things were just sort of piled up. So the library was desperately in need of uh, a good thorough weeding. And for those of you who don't know what that entails, um, I or someone else on staff pulls a list of books that aren't really circulating that we need to pull from the collection. Um, sounds easy enough, but it can be a lot of work. Um, <clears throat> so we look at a lot of factors, uh, whether it's outdated or irrelevant. Um, it's, a, it's a big undertaking, quite daunting. Um, <clears throat> So, um, somebody actually has to go to the shelves and pull all of these books for inspection. Um, and sometimes they're removed and sometimes they actually stay and need to be shelves, uh, reshelved again. <clears throat> so, it's, <clears throat> uh, regardless of what actually happens to them, someone is, still has to process them out, uh, remove the electronic record from our database, uh, do all the physical processing, like stamping them discarded and things like that, uh, and then some need to be reshelved. <clears throat> So we also needed folks to help us with shelf reading, which is basically just making sure the books are in order. But it is time consuming and it can be tedious, um, especially with like smaller kids books and things like that. Um, so the library was also in process of relabeling and reorganize. We have a huge workload to do and not a lot of people to do it. Um, and thankfully my Lions Club really stepped up and helped out. So we had, <clears throat> uh, since the library is about 11,000 square feet, we could easily bring in a small group of volunteers and meet all the required safely. So I received special permission from the city to bring in volunteers, uh, made sure we had plenty of sanitizer, cleaning supplies, PPE, et cetera, uh, and we were good to go. So we started out with a work party on a Saturday. Uh, about 10 of my lions showed up um, and they helped us shelf read, pull, and shelf books. Um, so the <clears throat> that particular work party was on a day the library was closed for staff as well. Uh, so it and the Lions graciously agreed to make the work parties a monthly activity. Uh, so we did two more Saturday work parties. Um, in addition to the group volunteering, a handful of our members uh, actually volunteered their time individually between January and April. I want to give a big shout out to Hope Ramsdale actually for coming in quite a lot and helping us with some of the computer work and the labeling. Um, but <clears throat> but because of the help from the Lions Club, we were able to shift the entire adult fiction collection collection we relabeled all the paperback books uh, and made sure the entire children's section was in perfect order um, so just to help illustrate how significant that help was uh, the library has a collection of just over 50,000 items so approximately 3,000 were relabeled over 20,000 children's books were shelf read and put in order and we weeded almost a thousand adult books from the collection so now our shelves have more room for growth. They look a lot snazzier. Uh, and we managed to fill several totes with discarded books um, to contribute to the club's recycling program. 
Uh, so the library received an enormous amount of help and we contributed to the recycling program and we got to see one another in person and experience that camaraderie that a lot of us were missing during the pandemic. Uh, so if anyone's looking to help out at your local library, uh, and I just love that presentation earlier from uh, Daniel Elkins about helping out uh, the library up there. Uh, it's a great idea. We could always use help. <laughs> uh, so if you're interested, I just recommend getting in touch with the library's director or the branch manager, volunteer coordinator, anything like that, and see what their needs are. Because um, I bet they have some and they would love to see some lions come out and help volunteer. So thanks. So that's all I really have to say. It was just a really big help. And I thought it was really amazing that we were able to come together in person safely. I think that was a great experience for everyone. So thank you so much, Natalie. And it did fit right in with our previous speaker. Moving right along to keep on schedule, I'm going to go to zone two. Fort Vancouver Lions does, uh, has an annual project that was really hampered by the pandemic, but we overcame. So go, I'd like to introduce uh, Jennifer Denny and past president Eva Halter, who are going to talk to us about the, how they handled the pandemic and community service. So we would like to share our screen and I'm going to, I'm sitting next to Jennifer and we'll be using her laptop. So give her the capacity to share the screen. Host. How does that happen? Who does that? I don't know. The host has to give us. I, I, I'm in. So I'm sure. Okay, thank you so much. For 16 years, the, we need to be slideshow right here. Okay. For 16 years, the Fort Vancouver Lions have presented the students of Washington Elementary School with a Santa store. Well, can you do the slideshow? So start from the beginning. Technical difficulties. Yeah. All right, here we go. Yeah. And um, so we should do this. This is a no cost situation for the students, for the school, and we provide a gift for every member of the family in, this, in the uh, student's life. And so it's a lot of stuff. We've traditionally stored it at the school, but because of COVID, we moved all of our uh, product to a different location. So we got some community partners. So we partnered with the church and we partnered with a Rotary Club for funds to help us out with the Linus organization for blankets for Clark County Quilters Guild to get a quilt to every family, Alaska Airlines to help us with the coats, um, uh, Blue Star, that's supposed to be Blue Star Transportation, and Minster Glacier Surveying helped with coats as well. So we had all these partners. We moved everything to the church set up the store, and then we moved ahead to, to make our store safe for the participants uh, who were actually filling orders. We felt a little bit like Amazon, mm -hmm. uh, filling orders, Christmas gifts for the school students. And then uh, every kid got a quilt for their family and a brand new coat, it was wonderful. Jennifer is going to tell us about how she um, worked towards getting all those coats. This is what the bags looked like. We packaged everything to go back to the school with a student's name on it. Well, thanks for letting us share about this. Uh, uh, COVID didn't stop us and we had the opportunity to add to the Santa store. Uh, 
we were a teenager and she had told us she'd given her coat to her mother. She didn't have a coat and it was, uh, you know, 38 degrees here. So it gave me the idea that there's a big need for coats and we asked happy to and excited about it, getting all the kids coats. And so the numbers are, um, I think it was over 300. 300. So 339 students received brand new coats. And so it started out with that idea from um, the need of a teenager. And then Eva created this wonderful flyer and had all the information started passing it around. And with our local partners and social media, um, I was so excited. Everybody wanted to donate a coat or several coats. My neighbors, my um, friends on Facebook, like even mentioned the local business partners. Um, every day I was uh, two boxes that were set up in a couple of different businesses and people could drop off uh, we put a box there um, so that was great so we got even family members of the Alaska Airline employees donating coats so you can see we had boxes and boxes of coats and uh, brought them to the Santa store and they we had so many volunteers and they kept putting them in the bags and it took a couple days but everybody got a coat and we had all sizes too for big teenager coats, you know, um, starter coats, and it was everybody just keep wanting to donate. We couldn't even after the coat drive. Mm -hmm. I kept getting more coats donated, so it was something that everyone loved to do during COVID, and and um, the school was ecstatic to be able to give these little kids coats. They had mentioned to Eva, our club works with that school for many years now that some kids were not allowed um, or weren't able to go to school because they didn't have the coat. They would stay home, it was too cold to walk. So we fixed that and our club uh, had a big success and the kids were really happy. Okay. Thanks for letting us share about our coat drive. Job well done, job well done. Thank you ever, ever so much. Give them a round of applause. Job well done. Mm -hmm. All right, next up, moving right along to zone three. Rod Maggie, tell us how uh, you charged forth during this pandemic. Helen, can you hang on a second? I, I, I can hang on a second. I've got a. I have to. Um, All right. There, stop the screen share. All right, so now who, let me see, uh, it's Rod. Rod Follow me. Rod invite Rod. I was trying to clear the screen here. Pardon the hiccup here. Rod, can you unmute? There he is. Can you hear me now? Absolutely. Okay. Can you hear me, Helen? Yes, I can, Rod. Go right ahead. Tell us how you kind of... All right. So, Zone 3, we've uh, struggled through... I started my journey as a Zone Chair. My theme was collaboration, and that was building partnerships within uh, clubs as well as within the community. And, and we partnered with the Rotary to help build our vision program, and all the clubs did uh, the same. And we've continued that effort this year. Um, all the schools shut down uh, during the pandemic. Uh, we found out that there was a few schools that were doing in-person learning, but 
most of the schools were shut down and rather than just uh, canceling everything, we kept contacting the schools and the nurses and saying, would you like, like to re um, open up? And uh, most of them did schedule for later in the spring. <clears throat> During that time, we also had uh, a few projects that got canceled and we were coming up with, well, how do we, how do we take on something new? And uh, so this year, uh, Cosmopolis uh, partnered and with the Aberdeen Club to take on a new service uh, project, an environmental project on a trail cleanup. We have uh, connecting trails along the uh, Aberdeen uh, Bossage Trailway connects with the uh, Chehalis River Pathway. And so on April 3rd, we got together. Uh, we provided PP&E for everybody. Everybody showed up. Uh, some of the Aberdeen Club showed up and Cosmopolis Club showed up. I think we had a total of 33 uh, people showed up for the trail cleanup. Then we started at 9 and we were done by 11.30. Uh, apartment and they helped supply some gear for us. Um, we provided uh, coffee and donuts because the lions can't roar without donuts. And uh, But we'd like to say that that was a good service project. And then after that service project, uh, the schools opened up as of uh, spring break. And so uh, I'd like to say that as of today, we have uh, completed uh, 2,300 uh, student screenings throughout the coastal communities. Um, so our, uh, our collaboration thing will work with anything, but as uh, Helen Keller said, uh, alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much. So I strongly encourage us to look to adjacent clubs and within your clubs and, and within your community and partner up and, and continue serving your communities. I'll keep it short and save you time, Helen. <laughs> Thank you so much. You you certainly uh, epitomize uh, adapting and uh, collaboration and working. Thank you so much. And then moving right along to uh, Zone 4, we have the Vader Alliance Club. And when I heard about this project, I could not believe it. So get out your papers and pencils because this will rock your socks. Uh, and presenting. Thanks, Kathy, for stepping up. Thanks, Ellen. Can everyone hear me? Can everyone hear me? Okay. I can hear you. Okay, we're good to go. Glad to be here this morning. First of all, I'd like to uh, share with you a, a project of the Vader Lions Club, a new project for us. So, place a penny in any tread groove on your car tire. Rotate that penny so Abraham Lincoln's head is up. Can you see Lincoln's entire head when the penny's inserted into the tread groove? Your tires are considered safe and legal if a, any portion of Lincoln's head is covered by the tread. However, if you see Lincoln's entire head after inserting the penny into the group, you may need to replace your tire. About 200 million replacement tires are purchased in the United States each year. You may have repurposed some used tires yourself for garden planters. Remember those tire swings made out of half tires or use them for playground toys. There are quite a few commercial uses for used tires too. Almost anywhere gravel is used, chances are tire chips can be used instead. They're used for sublayers for roadways, aggregate for drainage ditches, and highway embankment backfill. Some are turned into playground flooring, welcome mats, anti-fatigue mats, and vehicle mud guards. One of the earliest tire recycling companies called Lake and Tire was founded in 1918. So, getting on to our project, several of our Vader Lions Club projects are what we consider hybrid projects. We raise money by serving coffee at coffee stops. 
We're serving the public, keeping them alert on the road, but we also raise money for our service projects. At the Seattle to Portland bike ride, we serve snacks and beverages that meet the needs of bike riders, and we also raise funds for local service. So our entire art project was started as a new creative fundraiser, but we also make use of used tires, so we consider this an environmental project too. Anita Keeney, one of our club members, saw some art projects using used tires on Pinterest. She shared these with other members. She was always pulling her phone out and, and uh, showing us pictures of new ones, and she even printed some out and brought them in a booklet to share with the club. And she suggested we give this a try for a fundraiser for the holiday season, so we chose to focus on items for Christmas. We talked to a tire company up in Winlock, about eight miles away, and asked how much they would charge us for used tires. They kind of laughed and said, you can take all you want. They had three trucks full of them at the time. So we made several snowmen, painting, stacking, and decorating them. We also painted single tires in green, and decorated them to resemble wreaths. We used Anita's big barn so we could stay safely distanced. I'm going to show you a photo of some of the uh, things that we did. Raise and, it up just a little bit, Candy. Okay. Raise it up. Not oh, match. There you go. Okay. Sorry, I'm going low tech here, but there you go. So, during this project, I got to watch our club president and zone chair, Jessica, in a white hazmat suit, using a paint sprayer to turn black tires green. And that was, <laughs> that was kind of funny. <laughs> I don't think we took a picture, but we should have. So, we set up our snowmen and wreaths outside the church building, where we were putting together our Thanksgiving food baskets. Okay, yeah, one minute. Say what? One minute. Okay. Um, the Vader Park Board just got a grant for park improvements and we're planning to create a kids climbing area using old tires. We'll be making more tire art starting this summer. We're keeping our eyes open for new ideas. So if you search the internet using the term tire art, you'll be amazed at what you find, and it might be something we'll be making next. Thank you. So what do you think? Isn't that a wild and wacky project? And uh, Anne got through the pandemic and get and committed. Club involved. Thank you so much, Kathy. And then, last but not least, from this, or from Zone Six, we have Ryan Scott from Canvas. Go for it. All right, welcome everybody. I am going to attempt to do the share screen here. So hopefully, you're seeing a slide presentation. Let me put it on. Okay, do you see a Camp Curry slide right now? All yes. right, well, great. So this is one of our uh, rather long partnerships, and this involves our Camp Curry site. And this has been serving the youth and protecting the environment since 1947. And so what I wanted to do is kind of introduce you first to Camp Curry a little bit and describe what we've got. And it's just three miles north uh, of the main part of Camas. It's semi-wilderness in nature. Um, and it's also home to a variety of wildlife, things like osprey, ducks, turtle, bullfrogs, herons, deer, rabbits, and even an occasional bald eagle. Um, it has an outdoor mess facility. It has, as you can see, that's with the fireplace. It also has a uh, area for uh, spiritual gatherings, a chapel area, and it also has this nice gathering uh, place for, um, it has a stage and outdoor presentations, a fire pit. So very cool kind of a, kind of a location. It also has this wonderful lodge and the lodge is something we take advantage of as a club and have our annual Christmas party there. 
but the lodge has the ability to host uh, about eight uh, sleeping bunks on the top level and about 10 to 20 bunks on the lower level. So for, young, for the youth uh, scouts and the like to be able to use that. And that amphitheater I talked about also uh, uh, has some, uh, some additional capabilities as well. Now on the right side of the screen, you'll see what's called the Adirondack. And the Adirondack is kind of what we're gonna talk about here in a little bit where our, our current product. But first, as most of you know, any kind of nonprofit, and this is again, one of our partners, has to be supported by the community. And as a nonprofit, they are always in need of donations, of time and skills and funds in order to kind of keep all these rustic and wonderful facilities going to support our youth. Um, they have work days. And so different groups, you could be an Eagle Scout doing a project there. You can be any group in the community can come and do certain things. And from time to time, these special projects, is, which is where we came in this year. So very quickly, you recall the big windstorm we had not long ago, and it took a tree and it laid it right across one of the uh, ends of the Adirondack. And these Adirondacks, again, are rustic living uh, environments. They also have bumps in them, but they're open air. Uh, so they're unprotected to some degree. Well, it took us three weekend projects to do this, but they needed this put back into shape before the camping season hopefully returns uh, here in the post-COVID time. So we got together, did the demolition, started to get things as anyone does a rehab project, found other damage. And so, as you see, we got together, did the demo one weekend, we came back a second weekend and put together the basic structure and then a third weekend in order to get a final roof on. And when all is said and done, we had the Adirondack back in shape, except for one little board that we had to do uh, a little extra. But there you go, partnership in the community, youth in the environment. What a great day to be a lion. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. And I wanna thank all of our speakers today. What an outstanding job. Uh, and probably the most rewarding was when I contacted them without hesitation, every single one of them said, of course, we'll do that. So collaborating, sharing ideas, and I think our guest speaker today will be very proud of um, some of the ideas that he put forth. Thanks so much, and Mark, the mic is back to you. Great job, Helen. Great job to all of the presenters. These are terrific projects. I hope everybody's getting some good ideas, get the juices flowing again as we're coming out of this pandemic and able to really, really put our, our clubs to work. Next, I turn to Past Sister Governor Steve Patterson, who is also the multiple, is also representative. Past District Governor Steve you have the screen. Thank you, JD. And good morning, Lions. We're going to put up a screen saver here. Hope everyone isn't uh, ready to fall asleep just yet. You're looking at a picture of Gordon Smith. He was the executive secretary for MD-19 from 1960 to 1985. And he is the reason for the Gordon Smith Care Fellowship. And we'll talk a little more later about that. But as you know, care worldwide works dedicated to working with the poorest of the poor. I'd like to start by giving some uh, a little bit of the history of care. 
It really all began around 1946 when surplus rations were given to the real needy in war-torn Europe. The initials CARE originally stood for Cooperation for American Remittances to Europe. Sounds like a real government program. It has since changed to Cooperation for Assistance and Relief for Everyone. In the 1950s, Lions raised funds to continue sending care packages to developing nations. In 1952, LCI took its first official action by recommending care as a channel for helping victims of the Korean War. In 1957, Lions were so active that they were invited to join the CARE Board of Directors. MD-19 began its affiliation with CARE in 1951, and because of its efficiency, by 1958, direct support of CARE projects became a, a reality. Over the years, MD-19 Lions, Lionesses, and Leo's have raised over $1.2 million in support of the various care projects. We continue to work with the poorest countries in attempts to raise educational levels for youth to self-sufficiency for adults. Our most recent project was in Honduras teaching locals how to grow gardens, drilling wells for fresh water. All of these were difficult because of the COVID crisis and all of the government regulations. Our current project focuses, oh, excuse me, focuses on Haiti to support out-of-school children between the ages of 10 and 19 years who are primarily female, who are not in school, living in poverty. Our goal is to raise $40,000 U.S., and I'm pleased to announce that our fund total for all of MD-19 is over $23,000 as of today. So we're well on our way. District G while traditionally has been a low giving district, has been changed and we now lead the districts in our food raising efforts. And we hope to continue that in the future. Here's some of the ideas that we kind of have thrown around and one that worked well in our club, Longview Pioneer called Pass the Hat. That's literally what we did, Pass the Hat. It worked. It raised close to $3,000 in funds just from that project. It was the generosity of all of its members that makes these things happen. So if you're past the hat for care and it's not something that's a part of your annual budget, then do that. Don't feel bad about it either. Another lion shared that when it was your birthday, you stood up and gave $5 to care instead of to as a happy buck. So there's another idea. At our luncheon, when you pay for your meal right in front of the meal box with your change, is a is a jar. It says air on it. You can drop some money in there for care. 
as of 2007, if your club contribution is $500 or more, you're eligible for the Gordon Smith Fellowship. This is where you can honor a club member, just as you would for a Melvin Jones Fellow. Good part is it doesn't cost quite as much money. So if it's a thousand dollars that your club has donated for care, then you're eligible for two Gordon Smith fellowships. It's a wonderful thing that Gordon started, and uh, it's a reason I'm proud to have him as our uh, picture for this presentation. He is also the father of the next executive secretary from uh, for after 1980, Patty Allen. Many, it's Patty Allen White now. As Melvin Jones said years and years ago, you won't get very far until you do something for somebody else. That's what we live by, and that's what CARE lives by, and that's what we're doing worldwide. Where there is a need, there is a lion, and it's not going to go away. So we're going to be there, we're going to be there as long as it takes. Thank you, lions, and have a chance to donate a little money in your club for CARE. It's much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Past District Governor Steve. Our district LCIF representative is next up on the agenda. That's Past Council Chair Hal Palmer. Past Council Chair Hal, you've got the floor. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So, do we see empowering service on our screen? Hello? Yes, it's yes. up. Okay, great. Well, first, I, I want to just sit here and just shout out my thanks, my honest, um, deep felt heart that District G is the leader in multiple District 19 in this year's donations. It is just a, a oh. super blessing, a super blessing. Over eight hundred dollars, I think. What was that? Someone, somebody said something. Okay, I, I, it, it gets excited. So, District Governor Doug, your leadership has been just amazing in this area. Um, Pastor Net for being here, and I know your heart is there for LCIF as well of our, as our current international director, Ellen Hunt. Um, empowering service is so amazing. The question that's always in my mind is, where does your community end? The more that I see the good that LCIF does, I know for a fact that our community goes all around the world. And if you look at the um, areas that we serve in, um, you know, it's a foundation of service. Uh, we, of course, it's always amazing when the screen moves slow, right? If you look at all the things that you have access to in your club to understand what you can be, what you can do for site, um, what, what, Ms., what Mr. Elaine Elkins said earlier about reputation of eyeglasses and pancake breakfast you know he said that it with his heart because that is a lot what we do and that's okay but here's what we do we support hunger the environment childhood cancer diabetes um, humanitarian needs disaster relief the youth and vision. Those are the real expanding areas of LCIF. And I really want to thank 
um, Helen Sutphin, who came on through about the middle of the year as a co-coordinator. It's just, it's just been a blessing and a, an amazing, heartfelt um, help from that. What she's done is she has been, been able to add to call, calling the clubs and getting more, um, more people involved. If you look at overall for MD19, um, with these are our co-directors and the directors, you can see right there, through our last report, um, District G, but that's not the end of the story. If we look at what District G has done in different clubs that have participated in LCIF, and it showed their, their support, um, for that club. And then once again, hats off to my Longview Pioneer Lions at over $15,500. I want to finish. And most of you expect me to speak for an hour. I don't anymore. Uh, okay. You can laugh. It's okay. <laughs> but if you look at overall for our District 19G for the entire campaign, we have... Um, raised over $133,000, which out of the $202.1 million that has been raised, we were responsible for that last point one there. And that's, that's, it's critical to understand how important every dollar is. We have four model clubs and my hat's off to them. And if you look at, um, the first year, 30,000, the second year, 26,000, third year, 26,000. And this year, um, we're up to over $34,937. Um, that is counted. And to the Amos, Castle Rock, La Center, Longview Kelso Early Bird, Longview Pioneer Lions. Peninsula Lions. Salmon Creek Lions. Vader Lions. Vancouver Dawn Lions. My heart goes out to them when Thalassa Bill Karcher, good friend for 40 years. Vancouver, Fort Vancouver, way to go, it past council chair, um, JD. Washougal, Willapa Harbor, and then Aberdeen. So, congratulations to all. I just want uh, to understand that to the clubs that haven't donated. My heart goes out to you right now and it goes out like this. What if you could help a child? A disaster in some area. What if you can also convince your club to get on that list and make it go over 20? District Governor Doug's goal was for every club to do one Melvin Jones Fellow this year. There is still, wants you to uh, support LCIF with gusto. Thank you. Thank you, past council chair Howe. LCIF is our foundation, so let's all support it. Okay, I want to give everybody a little bit of a roadmap from where we are now. Now is that we're going to have a lunch break at 11:30, and an LCI service video that was compiled by our very own Dottie Scott from the Fort Vancouver Lions Club. Um, so we'll have a little bit of a break so that everybody can go get their lunch. Not very long. Maybe we'll play a little music for you so you can relax. Uh, then, in the afternoon at 12 o'clock, we're going to be starting with our international director. We're going to put him to work and actually get to hear from Larry Edwards, 
uh, and, uh, and, and he can do his presentation for all of us. And then we'll be doing some international awards. The breakout session, then we'll be our three of them, Leader Dog Trivia, Knights of the Blind, the Multiple District 19 Knights of the Blind Committee, and attracting quality members to our clubs. Uh, and then those, once those uh, learning sessions close, we will uh, have closing remarks from our district governor. And then everybody gets to get ready to go attend the picnic tomorrow. So at this point in time, uh, do we have any announcements or anything from the, uh, uh, fr from the conference chair? Or are we ready to take our break? Looks like we're ready to take our break. So what I will do is we will give you, we're just a couple of minutes early. We're almost right on time, which is great. We'll put on a little music so it'll give you time to go get your lunch and reconvene at 1230. Thank you all.